Hello everyone, it's been a while since we've done one of these videos. Um, my name is Sarah and today we are going to be taking a look at the Herbal Tarot by Michael. Hello everyone, my name is Sarah and today we are going to be looking at the Herbal Tarot by Michael Tierra and Candice Cantin. It's been a while since I've done a tarot review and it's been a while since I bought an, a tarot deck in general. I kind of, you know, really felt like I didn't need any more and there wasn't really any that had been speaking to me. Um, but I've been watching a few different videos on tarot lately. Um, Lady Lucia and Shamanic Arawak Priestess and they were both kind of talking about decks that are good for beginners. And I don't know if this deck is but they were talking about having decks that more closely conform to the Rider Waite Smith um, system. Sorry, I'm going to see if I can figure out how to open this. Oh, here we go. Um, and none of my, I mean, the Tarot of the Pagan Cats does, I'd say, pretty closely, but it's, it's cats, you know, so if you're not interested in the cat overload, you're not going to be that interested in this deck. And I don't have my ring light on, so I hope this isn't too dark. It just reflects real bad on these cards and the box. So we have the little white book here. It's a U.S. Games card deck. The card looks pretty good. Just a second. It's interesting that they give two of these. I don't really like that. It feels like a waste of paper, you know? Anyways, so the reason that I was drawn to this deck, Noisy Bus, was the fact that it has tarot. Or that it has tarot. Well, no crap, it has tarot. Um, no, the fact that it has herbs I'm really interested in herbalism and just learning about plants and all that, so I don't know. I really wanted it. It was an impulse purchase. Um, it was, I think, $28, which isn't that bad for a deck at all. Um, so we have the Fool, which is Ginseng. We have the Magician, which is Ostragalus. We have the High Priestess, which is Peony. Really pretty. I like those colors. Also, if you find that my descriptions of these cards are annoying, feel free to just turn off the um, sound and put on your favorite music because I have been told that my my descriptions and thoughts on the cards are trite and don't bring anything to the conversation, so to speak. And then we have the Empress, which is looks like either Dong or Dang. I think it's Dong Kwai. It's in cursive. It's kind of hard to tell. Um, I really hope, and I will look and see, that does it talk about what the herbs are? Yeah, it does. Okay, cool. So the deck has the, or the deck, the little white book has about the, the herbs. So we have the Fool, which is ginseng, and it gives the genus, which is Panax. Ginseng is the herb of cosmic energy. It is a tonic and demol scent. The root is used for all of the deficiencies and weaknesses. And then it says Uranus in parentheses, which I'm assuming is the planet it's um, associated with. And we have symbolically used for div divinatory meanings, reverse meanings, that sort of thing. So that's really interesting, and I like that. That's cool. Um, then we have the Emperor, which is at Treeside Tolle, Tol... All right, let me try that again. We have the Emperor, Emperor. I'm just a disaster. The Emperor, which is Atrasi Lodes, Lodes, Atrasi Lodes. This is really gonna test me. So the Emperor, and we have the High Priest, which is Sage. I wonder if the High Priest then is the Hierophant. Yeah, that's interesting. And another reason that I wanted to get this deck in regards to having a more like something closer to the Rider Waite deck was because I don't like the colors of the you know the Rider Waite like standard tarot deck. I think it's really garish and I just it's not pleasant for me to look at and I can't get over that to want to use it. So this this color palette's a much more you know soothing or you know gentle on the eyes. So then we have the Lovers, which is Parsley, the Chariot, which is Cypress, we have Strength, which is Cayenne, 
which that's a really good interpretation as was sage. I don't really know, even if I do know some of the herbs, I don't know always what the like associations are. I like this for the hermit, licorice. I really like licorice. It's something I like in my tea. We have medicine wheel. Okay, I don't know how I feel about that. It's called, then we have slippery elm, and I know that's a plant that has a lot of medicinal uses. I'm not sure if I like it being called medicinal wheel. Plantain for justice, I like that. Plantain's one of the plants that I've been working with because it's easy and you can't really poison yourself with it. And we have suspended person. That's interesting, it's not the hanged man. And it's kelp. And I find that interesting. I wonder if they thought that, sorry, my camera's shaking. Um, I wonder if they thought calling it the hanged man was too violent. You know, which I don't really think so. But I appreciate the gender neutral um, verbiage used here. And we have death, elder flowers. That makes sense because they're poisonous. It's really pretty. I like the way they drew them. I like death. Shrouded. And then we have temperance, which is echinacea. Okay, my mom grows these. I didn't know that was echinacea. So, like, it's interesting to me recognizing the... Um, recognizing the plants and not realizing I didn't know their names. So this is Pan the Devil. Wouldn't that be the devil, I think? And you have Lobelia or Lobelia. Again, it's kind of hard to tell with the cursive, which is weird because I write cursive. You think I'd be able to read it? It says this, okay, this deck was originally printed in 1998 and then reprinted in 2004. So this is the devil, I guess. I wonder if they thought calling it the devil was too scary as well. I wonder if this is one of those decks that tries to make everything peaceful and lovey. So then we have the tower, which is garlic. And I really do like this tower. Um, I have a hard time finding tower cards that I like aesthetically, but this is one I do like. So then we have the star, which is skull cap. We have the moon, which is lemon balm. I really like this moon. I like it has the scorpion and the salamander and all that, but it also has the moon in it. It's, it's a really nice interpretation of the card because I wasn't a huge fan of the like original moon card. And I actually had a lemon balm plant that I grew for a while and I had a really hard time getting it to like grow. The leaves were always kind of crispy on the edges, which is weird. And we had the sun for Angelica. And then we have judgment, which is golden seal. The world, which is comfrey. And that's the end, I believe, of the major arcana. Okay, so moving on to the minor arcana. That's interesting. These are backwards. I always find it interesting what order the minor arcana ends up in. It's all on how the cards are printed, but it doesn't really matter. So we have the King of Swords, which is St. John's Wart. I really like the way those flowers look in real life. They're very pretty. The Queen of Swords, Lady Slipper, which is ironic because she's barefoot. And we have Wild Cherry Bark for the Knight of Swords. We have the Page of Swords with Dill, another plant I grew for a while. I really do like this page of swords. I like the way they look. And we have ten of swords, which is ephedra. We have the nine of swords, which is valerian. Eight of swords, which is black cohash. Cohash. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. And then we have the seven of swords, which is wood betony. Or betony. Again, I don't know how it's pronounced. And we have the six of swords for vervin. We have the Five of Swords for Mistletoe. This is interesting. I really like the way the sunset, those colors are really pretty. We have Mulan for the Four of Swords. I like that because he's kind of, Mulan is something that like, from what I understand, it makes you kind of like drowsy and he's, you know, not aware of what's going on. He's got the Three Swords above him, I like that. We have the Three of Swords, which is, can't read that. Pleurisy root, there we go. And we have the Ten of Swords, or no, Two of Swords, sorry, which is Passion Flower. 
We have the Ace of Swords, which is Chamomile. We have the King of Wands, Cinnamon. We have the Queen of Wands, which is Raspberry Leaf. I like that. And she's got a little caddy, although it does look like they're trying to make her look um, Native American, which unless she actually is, I feel like that's not a good thing to do. Well, this is interesting. This is the first time I've noticed this. Aconite, Poisonous Herb. I wonder if that other card had that, the Elderberry. So aren't they poisonous? I don't know for sure. You would think the elderflowers. It doesn't say. That's interesting. It's interesting that aconite has that, like, you know, caveat, I suppose. And then we have Shepherd's Purse, which is the Page of Wands. We'll have to keep a lookout and see if anybody else has that. Prickly Ash Bark for Ten of Wands. Bayberry Bark for Nine of Wands. Sassafras for the Eight of Wands. They're sliding all over the place. So then we have Wild Ginger for the Seven of Wands. We have Hawthorn for the Six of Wands. This one's nice. I like this one. Turmeric for the Five of Wands. Fennel Seed for the Four of Wands. Saffron for the Three of Wands. Saffron should have been for the like the, the King of Pentacles or something because it's so expensive. Basil for the Two of Wands. I have a basil plant right now actually growing in our kitchen. We have Saw Palmetto for the King of Cups. I really like the way that looks. Kind of reminds me of, um, I don't know who, there's an actor that looks like this person and I can't think of who they are, but it reminds me of them. The Lady's Mantle for the Queen of Cups. She's really pretty, I like her. We have the Knight of Cups, and I really like the like headdress type thing. It's not really a headdress, it's just the wings. It looks like very much like a Greek messenger, and I really like that forward type energy for a Knight of Cups. And if I didn't already say, this is Sarsaparilla. Then we have Damiana for the Page of Cups. And then for the Ten of Cups, we have Marijuana. I'm wondering, is this the first one that hasn't had a person, I wonder? Well, that one has hands. I don't know. Oh, no, nope, there we go for the Eight of Wands. So there are some that don't have people. That just, it struck me as very odd. That's, I guess, very appropriate for the Ten of Cups. Then we have Squaw Vine for the Nine of Cups. And I'm not sure how I feel about that name. So, yeah. For the Nine of Cups. It's a very page-like outfit. And we have Gravel Root for the Eight of Cups. And we have Juniper Berries for the Seven of Cups. Juniper Berries keep showing up in my life lately. I wonder what that means. Watermelon for the Six of Cups. It's really cute. Horsetail for the Five of Cups. Horsetail has always looked very skeletal to me, or skeletal. It used to grow where we would go swimming in the creek and when it was dry, if you walked through it, it sounded like a snake like slithering on the rocks and it would scare me. But random anecdote aside, then we have Burdock for the Four of Cups. You know what I'm surprised by? That there isn't any borage, or at least that it wasn't the Empress, you know? We have Trillium for the Three of Cups. And then we have Uva Ursi for the Two of Cups. And it's interesting, the symbols here, that just, it feels like something they haven't been including in the other ones that it's there now. We have the Lotus for Ace of Cups, and that works really well. Oops. We have Alfalfa for the King of Pentacles. And Marshmallow for the Queen of Pentacles. I thought that was her hair for a second that she had pink hair. It's like, oh, cool. But no, it's her little hair covering. I'm not sure what the technical name for that is. The Knight of Cups had, or nope, Knight of Pentacles, let me try that again, has Ella Campane, Ella Campane, or Ella Campane. It depends on where the word comes from. Is it Spanish? Is it Italian? You know, is it Germanic? But anyways, there's that. We have Blue Flag for the Page of Pentacles. And for the Ten of Pentacles, we have Wild Yam. For the Nine of Pentacles, for the Nine of Pentacles, we have Dark Grapes. I really like that dress. It's very pretty. We have Ginger for the Eight of Pentacles. 
We have rhubarb for the seven of pentacles, hops for the six of pentacles, mugwort for the five of pentacles, cascara bark for the four of pentacles. That's an interesting outfit. And we have gentian for, or yeah, I guess it'd be gentian for the three of pentacles. Yellow dock for the two of pentacles. I like this person, they're very, very pretty. I like that pink dress with their skin tone. We have whole grains for the ace of pentacles. So that's interesting that only one of these cards was labeled as poisonous. I wonder if, like I said, I don't know that much about herbs. So I, you know, aconite might be the most like, extremely poisonous, but did I, I feel like I didn't say that this was cinnamon. I feel like I would have. That's interesting though, because cinnamon is usually, um, you see it as a tree, not as a young plant, but I suppose it's young at some point. Like, are these all not... Because isn't mugwort poisonous? I'm going to have to look this up. I will be back in a second. Okay, so for mugwort, we were talking about, according to the internet, um, it can be toxic in high doses. Um, it can cause miscarriage. Let's see, what else? I'm going to look up elder... Was it elderflower or elderberry? Is elderberry toxic? Yeah, no, they are. I thought so. So it's odd that that was the only one that said that. But anyways, let's look at the back of the cards, which is something I usually do first, but forgot to do. That's really pretty. I think that's rosemary that they have on the back. That's a very good, um, a very good choice. So then we have this card, which I said we talked about briefly. This is Wild Rose, the Herbal Tarot, and it tells you again who it's by, by Michael... Tierra Herbalist and Candace Catin, which is the artist. And then we have this card, which I feel like is a little bit of waste of paper. It says, The path of the herbalist is to open ourselves to nature in an innocent and pure way. She in turn will open her bounty and reward us with many valuable secrets. May the earth bless you. I'm going to look and see where is, there's the high priestess, the lovers, justice, death. doesn't say. That's interesting that that was the only one. So as I usually do at the end of all of these um, deck look-throughs, I shuffle it and pull a card just for the fun of it. What card would this deck like to give us? What does this deck want us to see? The Knight of Cups, apparently, for Sarsaparilla. Make of that what you will. So I hope you enjoyed this little look through. It was pretty basic. I don't usually go very in depth with what I talk about, um, just because I feel like I don't want to influence anyone else's like meanings of the individual cards. I want this to be more so for people who are considering getting this deck. They can see all the art. They can, you know, they get a brief, you know, if I have really any thoughts, obviously I didn't have that much about this deck, mainly because I am less familiar with the traditional Rider Waite symbolism than some of my other decks. I feel like this is less intuitive for me. I'm going to need to actually spend some time with it. Not that I don't spend time with my other decks, but it's another one of those decks that I feel kind of intimidating to read with because it feels like the meanings of the cards are less obvious, but it's definitely a good deck. It goes pretty well with the original Rider Waite symbolism. I like the inclusion of herbs. I like the fact that they explain in the Little White Book um, what they are. I wish they talked a little bit more about the card itself, but that's okay because you can find online all sorts of references or in books. So yeah, that is that. I hope you're all having a great either fall or spring, depending on what hemisphere you live in. And yes, I hope you're all having a great day. Bye.